Ambassador Lee, the floor is yours. Okay, merci Thomas. Vous m'entendez? Je suis très heureux avec vous ce matin ici à Abu Dhabi. Je voudrais tout d'abord féliciter Thierry et son équipe d'IFRI de leur courage et de leur capacité de mettre en place cette conférence merveilleuse malgré de nombreuses contraintes, obstacles sanitaires et logistiques. Bravo et merci. The expanding tension and conflict between the United States and China is much more serious concern to Korea than any other countries in the world because of history and geographical vicinity. The military alliance with the United States is a backbone of Korea's foreign policy, but we need to note that more than 30% of Korea's total export goes to China and Hong Kong, and Korea is the largest source of China's import. In addition, maybe more importantly, the U.S. and China are two indispensable partners for Korea to manage the threat from North Korea, maintaining peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. It is almost impossible for Korea to segregate economic and geopolitical concerns, and I think the idea of eventual economic decoupling with China is a non-starter for Korea. Having that said, as an ally of the United States, Korea will follow the U.S. strategic trends, and it was reconfirmed at the face-to-face -face summit meeting of the two countries in May at the White House. However, it would be difficult for Korea to join any initiative explicitly targeting China, such as AUKUS. The international political order we want to see is non-exclusive, and we value highly the cooperation with all countries of the world because more than 90% of Korea's total GDP is generated from the external trade. Korea wants to remain a good and reliable partner of the United States without confronting and provoking China in the future. In response to the current geopolitical situation, Korean companies like Samsung, LG, SK, and Hyundai Motors are all trying to increase their investment in the United States and are currently examining how to change their current global supply chain. At the sideline of Korea-US summit meeting of May, those four companies announced the around 40 billion US dollars investment in the United States. This investment in the United States will allow those Korean companies to be able to produce high-end technology products in a trusted and predictable political and legal environment. Business leaders of Korea are well aware that U.S.-China conflict will continue, and it is a constant important factor in considering their business strategy. Now I would like to briefly touch upon TPP and RCEP in the context of U.S.-China rivalry. I think the U.S. will come back to TPP, though not immediately. In case of U.S. return, it will play a very significant role in changing the current global supply chain dominated by China and to establish <coughs> international trade rules such as digital trade without China and even without the European Union. But the decision of the Biden administration regarding TPP will be most likely made after the midterm election of next year because trade is not so popular issue in the domestic politics and does not help to increase supporting votes in the election. In case 
U.S. returns, however, it will not return to TPP of 2016, but it will propose TPP plus based on the provisions of USMCA and strengthen the labor and environment as well as digital trade and climate change provisions. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, RCEP, whose negotiation began in 2011, was signed in November last year among ASEAN 10 plus five countries without India. However, the agreement is not so commercially meaningful in substance because its level of liberalization, both in goods and services, remains almost unchanged from the current ones provided by the already existing bilateral FTAs between the signatories. Even the prospect of its entry into force is not so clear yet. It requires ratification of at least six ASEAN countries and three non-ASEAN countries for the entry into force. As for non-ASEAN countries, China and Japan have already ratified the agreement and Korea plans to do so before end of the year. For ASEAN, it seems rather complicated. Myanmar may not be able to ratify soon because of a recent political situation. Malaysia is not likely as well because it recently becomes rather negative to the trade liberalization agreement. We have to note that Malaysia and Brunei have not ratified even CPTPP, TPP 11 yet. It would take rather long time for the agreement to enter into force in case U.S. raise concerns or U.S. comes back to TPP. Ironically, the fact that RCEP is not so commercially meaningful can be a reason why U.S. may not care much about the RCEP, but the political and symbolic importance may matter more to the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Lee. <coughs> and I think uh, one of uh, your main points is to, to remind this uh, uh, wish for, for Korea to, to stay in line with the U.S. without provoking China's um, balanced position. So <laughs>